Do you remember when this was the pinnacle of smartphone speaker innovation back in college? It worked for those bad college parties, but now that we're older, wiser, and, you know, have better houses, it's time to upgrade. I built this. as an improvement. Sounds pretty good and looks a lot better. Let me show you how I made it. Go Go Gadget Woodworking. Like most small projects, this is a great build for scrap wood. I searched through my cutting board pile and found a nice piece of maple and another of paduk. These contrast nicely and are one of my favorite wood pairings. I resawed the paduk down to about 3 16 of an inch and planed the boards flat. Then I laminated them together, which will give me a simple striped pattern when I'm done. Once the new laminated board was dry, I trimmed it down to final width and then cut it into 4 inch long boards that I'll eventually glue together into a big cube. First, I had to cut out the holes for the cavity. My original plan was to make a fully conical cavity to match the bell shape of most wind instruments. However, turns out that neither I, nor Lowell Makes, had the angled router bits required to make that easy, and using a 45 degree bit would have made a much more extreme cone than I was looking for. If I do this again, I'll invest in 11 and 22 and a half degree bits to be able to make the different shaped openings. I thought I could potentially duplicate the effect with a spindle sander, but that would have taken half an eternity and wasn't turning out great, so I scrapped that. I briefly tried chisels, but again I wasn't happy with how that was working. So I went back to basics and cut a 2.5 inch straight hole in each board and used a 45 degree chamfer bit to give the opening more of that horn shape. I suspect I sacrificed some sound quality by doing this, but sometimes you have to do what you can with the tools that you have. If you've made one of these speaker boxes, drop a comment with your favorite way to make a cone so I can try something different next time. Once the holes were drilled, I routed out a slot for my phone, as well as a hole for the sound to reach the resonating cavity. I could have made a template for this, but I didn't feel like it, since this is just a one-off project. I used a small, straight-cut bit and cut it freehand. Having the plunge base for my router makes this sort of cut so much easier. I'll drop a link to this tool and some of the others I used in this project in the description. Then I dry fit it all and decided that something was missing. Staring into the cone looked a little weird. So my wife, the queen of sewing, came up with a great idea. Cover the front with a piece of cloth. So into her marvelous world of fabric we went, where I discovered the perfect Jack Skellington pattern for this project. She cut it out for me because she's better at that sort of thing than I am, and also I, a big bad woodworker who uses powered spinning blades of death without batting an eye, am afraid of her tiny little rotary cutter. I glued everything together, sandwiching the fabric in between the first and second boards. I wasn't sure how well the glue joint would hold up with the fabric in there, but it seems like it worked fine. Once everything was dry, I covered up the fabric with some blue tape so I didn't get it all dusty and gross, and sanded the box smooth. Then I routed some chamfers on all the edges so it'll look nice and have less of a chance of splintering. I used wipe-on poly for this project, 
The finish itself doesn't super matter, but I wanted something easy to control so I didn't accidentally spray, brush, or splatter any finish onto the fabric. I'd say the results speak for themselves. Remember, it's not a real party unless you built the speaker box yourself. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the project. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, like and subscribe so you don't miss an upload.